This is my hexadecimal relay calculator. Just to do a quick review on how it operates, you can see that it has a panel, a button panel set up here that's much closer to what a normal calculator resembles. The buttons are really small, so there's no actual numbers on them, but it's fairly easy to remember what they do. And starting in the bottom left here, we have zero, and then uh, going right from there, we have one, two, three, four, and then on the second row, we have five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then when we get to this third row that are yellow, that's when we go into the hexadecimal. So A, which is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, and F is 15. So with these buttons, we can, we can do any numbers between uh, 0 and 15, and just 10 through 15 are represented by A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now, if we want to do an operation, we'll say let's do uh, 3 plus. If we want to do plus, this is set up kind of like the terminals on a battery, so uh, black for minus, red for plus. Um, so we can just hit plus. And then we'll do, you know, four. Uh, and three plus four equals, that's what the green button is, seven. All right, so you can see that it did the math correctly. Now we have this seven being displayed here, but it's not actually saved in any of the math registers. So we can't just hit plus and another number to do rolling addition like that. Um, but we can start the next operation without having to clear anything out. So I can just, you know, if I want to do four plus four, I can just hit four plus four equals eight. Uh, and if I wanna you know, continue using that number, I just have to hit it again, and then I can do a plus, and eight plus one equals nine. All right, now if I wanna do subtraction, uh, then I use the little black button up there. So if I wanna do nine minus, we'll say four, and then you press the equals key, and you can see that it did the subtraction correctly. Nine minus four is indeed five. Now this minus symbol shows up, but that doesn't mean that it's a negative number. That just means that we did a subtraction operation. Uh, now there is a little bit of an issue uh, with the subtraction operations. It doesn't clear out the math registers properly. Um, so you have to kind of finagle it a bit to clear it out. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is just to hit plus equals, and then now you can start your next operation. So if I want to do four plus four again, you can see that we get eight. Now there's, every time I push a button, you notice that there's a collection of noises going on here. And what's happening is that we have a control board that is controlling which relays are enabled and which relays are disabled uh, in order to properly save uh, data in the correct places. Um, so one of the great things about the way this is laid out is that all of these boards are actually removable. So if I just pull one of these boards out here, you can see that the, the board itself plugs into the the motherboard here, the main board on the bottom, through just these little header pins here. Uh, and then, you know, you can see this one has a couple here. And then on the right side here, you can see that there's uh, six pins. And each one of these cards uh, has these two pins on the far right, and then some variation of the next four. And these two pins on the right are uh, voltage and ground, so that's our power and ground for each board. Uh, and then the next four beside it are a data bus. Um, so four bits of data that we can put onto that, and then it can be stored or used by various other cards in the system. Uh, to explain what each card is, you can see that we have at the very front here, we have our input panel. This has the display and our input buttons on it. The next two boards behind that are the display register boards. Uh, these save which seven segments of this seven segment display need to be illuminated. Uh, so it, it takes whatever data it needs to and saves those seven bits into here. The next board behind it is a decoder board for the buttons. Whenever I push a button, it goes through a series of diodes to output the correct binary sequence onto the data bus. The next five boards are decoder boards in the other direction. They take four bits of binary and using a sequence of 
diodes, they decode it into the seven segments necessary for our display. And then, you know, whatever the seven bits that are decoded through this are stored in our display register up here. The board on the end is our control board. So whenever I push a button, you can hear a sequence happen. And that sequence is happening on this board. And all this board is doing is controlling which boards are writing or reading uh, throughout the whole collection here. Now this board that I took out and the board just after it on the right side here are a type of static RAM that I actually ended up not using when I remade my control board here. So these two boards are actually not necessary at all. We can just take them out and it doesn't affect the uh, operation of the calculator, any at all. So perhaps someday in the future, I will build something different, maybe a, a diagnostic blinking light board or something that, that fits in those slots. The next two boards after that are the two math registers. We have the uh, M register and the N register, so the mic register and the November register. Uh, these store four bits of data each for the uh, arithmetic unit to do math on. The next board is the exclusive OR board. It takes the four bits from the N register and it will invert them to do subtraction. And then these last four boards are the arithmetic unit. Each board is one bit. So, you know, th this board does uh, math on, you know, the, the fourth bit and the third bit and the second bit and the first bit. So whenever you press a button, what actually happens? What is the logic flow of this? Well, whenever I press a button, you know that you notice that there is a series of clicks that happens. And the first thing that happens is that when I push a button, the five volts is passed through the button and into the uh, decoder board here. So each one of these buttons has an individual line, which you can see is, is why there's so many pins on the bottom here. Um, and then that individual line comes into the decoder board here to decode into four bits of binary. Now that four bits of binary is output onto the data bus and two things happen with it from there. The first is that it goes into the decoder board here, the decoder boards, five of them. Uh, and it takes that four bits of binary and it changes it into seven bits for our display. And then the control board here on the end is enabled. When the control board is enabled, you can he you hear that it makes a sequence. And on the first step of that sequence, it enables the display register here and it enables the math register here. So both of these registers turn on and they can now save data. The math register saves the four bits that are on the data bus and the display register saves the seven bits that are being output by the group of decoder boards here. And then the second step of that sequencer, it turns the enable for the display register and for the math register off but the four bits of binary from my button is still hanging out on the bus. This way we can ensure that we get a genuine good save into both the display register and the math register. Whereas if we were to uh, turn the data that's being put onto the bus off at the same time as our enable, we can sometimes get a lot of junk stored in either register and get incorrect operations. Now, when I press an operation button, a minus or an add, one of two things happens. If it's the addition, all it does is it engages a latch to change from the, the mic register to the November register, from the M register to the N register. So that way, the next time that I push a button, instead of saving it to the mic register, it's now saving whatever that input is to the November register. Uh, the other thing is, is that if you push the minus button, it kicks off a latch that enables the exclusive or unit and it will invert, you know, whatever data is being stored into this register behind it. So it makes just a really soft click. If you listen closely, well, you may not have been able to hear it over the sound of the button itself because it doesn't engage the sequencer. All it does is just click one relay on that latches and stays on.
Now, when you press the final button, the green button here, again, the sequencer board here, the control board in the back, the sequencer starts and we hear that click, click, click that goes by, but it does slightly different operations. The four arithmetic boards here are always doing math on the whatever is stored in the mic register and the November register. So if it's all zeros or if we've only input one number or if we've input both numbers but we change our mind and change to a different number before we hit equals, it doesn't matter. This is constantly figuring out what the addition or subtraction is between these two boards. When we hit the equals button, the math is actually already done. All we're doing is now outputting that answer onto the data bus. So when I hit equals, what happens is, is a relay opens up to enable these four boards to output the answer onto the four bit data bus. And then that four bits is go goes through the decoder and decodes into seven bits for the, for the LED here. And then that seven bits is stored in the display register here. All right. So, we enable the arithmetic unit on the first step and we enable the display register to write to it. And then on the second step, we keep this enabled and we disable this. So that way we get a clean save into this one. And then at the end of the second step, we disable the output from this. And that's really all there is to the logic in this hexadecimal relay calculator. So you can see here, that's how my hexadecimal relay calculator operates. Next, we'll take a look at the individual boards and how they work on a much smaller scale. And then maybe we'll look into figuring out how to build something that replaces these two boards that are no longer being used.